Hey guys, Hackexploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux uh, for pen testing. Um, so the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of you actually pointed out that I cover, you know, uh, various pen testing distributions like Kali and ParrotOS. Um, I've used them in my videos and many of you have been asking me to use Black Arch. So I made a, a several videos showing you how to install Black Arch. And many of you have actually told me to install Arch from scratch and how to use the Black Arch repos uh, so that you can set up and install the tools. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux uh, from scratch uh, on VirtualBox. That's something to take into consideration uh, because if you're, if you're installing it on a UEFI system, then there are a few changes with the installation process. I'm going to be dealing with BIOS. So, you know, just keeping things very, very standardized. As for the desktop environment that I've settled for, I'm going to be using XFCE4, which is my preferred desktop environment. You can use KDE or a tiling window manager if you uh, if you want to if you actually want to do that I'll probably make independent videos covering how to do that because, uh, but it's uh, after you've installed arch uh, or at least the base it's very very easy to get uh, to get your system up and running and customize the way you want it I'm going to be following the arch wiki installation guide uh, just so that you guys have a roadmap in case you have any issues you can follow along with the arch wiki uh, and um, Again, we'll also be using the Black Arch repo. So uh, all the links to these uh, web pages and websites will be in the description section. The first thing you want to do is you want to download the Arch uh, ISO. So you can do that by going to archlinux.org uh, forward slash download. And um, you can see uh, the magnet and torrent links right over here. So it's about 630 megabytes. And this will pretty much be the last time you ever download Arch Linux uh, or the ISO again. All right, so let's get started uh, by opening up VirtualBox here. And uh, we're just gonna create a new machine. So I'll just open this up, a uh, new machine here. And we'll just call this Arch Linux. And uh, the machine folder, uh, I'm just gonna specify uh, within uh, one of my direct, within one of my drives here under VMs. So VMs and Arch Linux, and I'm just gonna hit okay. And again, you can specify whatever directory you want. Um, and you can see by default with VirtualBox, the moment I type in virtual or I type in Arch Linux, it's able to detect from the input that uh, the version and the type is gonna be Linux and Arch Linux uh, respectively. So I'm gonna hit next. Um, I'm gonna specify about two gigs of RAM here. So uh, 2048 or 2048 MB. I'm just gonna hit next, create a virtual hard disk now. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it as a VDI. You can also change that if you want to. I'm gonna leave it at dynamically allocated and I'm gonna change the size to 15 gig. Uh, so if you actually are going to use this VM for pen testing, you might want to increase the size, but I'm just, uh, I'm gonna be using this for demonstration purposes. So yeah, again, I'll just leave it at 15. Uh, and plus we're not installing anything major here. That's the beauty of Arch. So I'm just gonna hit create and I'm gonna go into settings and we're going to take a look at the system settings. For the processor, I'll set mine to four CPUs um, and for acceleration, I'll leave that as it is. For display, yeah, we can enable 3D acceleration and I'll specify the maximum amount of video memory there. Uh, for the storage, we want to go into the controller IDE and specify the Arch Linux ISO. You can, uh, you can specify the location. I already have mine there because I was just using it. Uh, as for the network, we'll switch into the bridged adapter here. Make sure you specify your appropriate adapter. And uh, for the USB, make sure you're currently using USB 1.1. Uh, that's just a, a small configuration um, option if you do have an error with that. Uh, and with that set, we can actually start the Arch uh, VM right now. So I'm just going to minimize. Um, I'm just going to minimize VirtualBox as a whole. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me just see if I can actually scale this uh, virtual ski of the virtual screen here to about 125, or um, let, me, let me just see if I can rescale it a bit more so you guys can actually see what's going on here, just right over here. All right, so uh, I've started up, I'm just gonna boot uh, Arch Linux here, and let me just change this one more time. Apologies for this, I just wanna make sure everything is scaled correctly so that you guys can actually see the commands I'm gonna be running. Um, so we'll just wait for this to start up and it should prompt us into Arch. There we are. So we are now working within the Arch ISO and we can begin the installation process. All right. So I'm just going to be moving back and forth here. But uh, in fact, I think what I'll do is I'll just zoom out and I'll edit this in post processing so that you guys can actually see the commands I'm typing. So let's start off with the first step within the installation, uh, in, within the installation process through the Arch wiki. 
Um, so you, you can go ahead and verify the signature of the ISO you've downloaded. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, start by checking whether we have an internet connection. So pinggoogle.com. And yes, we do have a connection. And again, you can display your IP address information. You can see right over here, I have an IP of 192.168.1.115. So we're good to go there. Um, so that's the first thing you want to do. The second thing you want to do is update the system clock right over here. Let me just zoom this in so you guys have a, a better picture of what, what I'm actually selecting. So we want to set the time, uh, date, control, and we set this MPP and we're going to say true and hit enter. Uh, once that is done, we can actually check uh, the the time and date uh, status here. So we're just going to say status and that looks fine, even though my time zone isn't UTC, we'll be setting that shortly. Uh, but that's very important uh, to set up your, uh, your, your system clock to ensure that you don't have any issues when connecting to servers and everything is synchronized. All right, so it tells us uh, we now need to move on to partitioning. So you can either use FDisk uh, or CFDisk if you want. Uh, they actually are using FDisk here. So what we'll do first is we'll just list uh, the disks that we have here with uh, with FDisk. So I'll just hit FDisk L. You can see we have um, one uh, disk, which is the VBox hard disk, which is 15 gigs uh, right over here. And that is uh, that has the the name uh, or the ID dev SDA, so storage device A. Uh, and the other one is the loop. Uh, so we don't we don't work with that. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to be using CF disk. So I'm just going to say CF disk. I specify the name or the ID here. So SDA and I'm going to hit enter. Uh, now for the label type, if you are going to be using or installing U UEFI, uh, then you want to stick with GPT. So since I'm using BIOS, I'm going to go with DOS. Um, now I'm not creating any swap partition. So you can see right over here, they give you the example layouts that you can work with. So BIOS with MBR, you have your mount, uh, you have your, uh, that, that's actually where you'll be installing your main, uh, your, your main root file system. And you have your swap right over here. So you can create it very, very easily. So again, if I wanted to create uh, these partitions, what I would say is I'll say new, um, let's say, uh, we'll say about, uh, Two, two gigabytes right over here and that is a primary and we'll change the type here we want to look for Linux swap that is 82 on the menu and uh, we can then hit right and then that will be the um, that will be the swap partition so I can hit uh, right over here and I'm gonna hit yes and then we can say we can go down and we can hit new uh, and 13 gig so primary and then we want to make this bootable and that's where we'll in install our system now if you're working with uefi you can see you'd need a uh, you'd need the actual root file system uh, the root uh, partition sorry you need a swap partition if you wanted one and you'd have your boot partition which is where you uh, you install your efi uh, this is your efi system partition so that's if you want to go uh, about doing it that way. Now, I I don't I personally do not want uh, any uh, any swap partition, so I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to hit new uh, 15 gig maximum primary, and I'm just going to specify that it should be bootable here, and I'm then going to write the changes. So I'm going to hit yes, and there we are, and I can finally quit. All right. So after you have uh, you have actually created your uh, your partition here, we need to format the partition. And we can do that using the make file system command. Uh, but before we do that, let me just display the, the disks for you. So if I say F disk L, you can see it now tells us we have dev SDA one here, and that is uh, that is of type Linux. And uh, since we haven't uh, actually formatted as XD4, it'll actually it'll not display that. So that's the first thing we want to do is we want to say uh, make file system dot XD4, and then we specify. So we're going to say dev SDA one right because that's the new partition we created i'm going to hit enter and that's going to create the partition for us so if i just display f disk l right now you can see that uh, we've created the partition and it's uh, xt4 all right so now we have uh, created our partition the next thing we need to do is we need to mount the file systems which is right over here and we're mounting it on the mount uh, in the mount directory so we're just going to do that right now so mount uh, sorry uh, dev um, sda1 and this is under mount and i'm going to hit enter all right now that we have mounted it now we uh, we can begin installing our base system now there are a few things that have changed um i think over the last few months with arch uh during the installation process now typically you'd use packstrap 
uh, and you'd install the base, uh, base devel packages, Linux for the Linux kernel and the Linux firmware for drivers. But now you need to install uh, a few more packages that have been removed from the base and the base devel packages. So again, we'll say packstrap uh, i to install under mount, and then we'll say let's let's start off with bear. We'll, we'll start off with the base packages and base developer packages. So base base devel. Uh, we then specify the Linux LTS kernel. I, I love using the LTS kernel. You can use the, the latest version if you want to, and then you can uh, install and configure the, um, the LTS kernel after you've set up your system. But I don't recommend that because you'll have to reconfigure Grub again. So again, we'll say Linux uh, firmware, uh, that's for your drivers. Uh, we also have to install um, uh, DHCP, DHCP, yeah, DHCP, so DHCP CD, uh, that has been removed, man, uh, vim, nano, sorry, nano, uh, what else, let's see what else we're missing here, uh, so we've installed base, base devel, Linux LTS, am I missing anything, Linux firmware, man, vim, nano, I think that's it, so I'm just going to let that synchronize the package databases and begin the download and installation process. Now, I know I haven't covered uh, the mirror selection process, uh, but it typically selects the mirror that's closest to you. Uh, if you want me to continue uh, making videos uh, on Arch and how to install it, how to get it configured, do let me know. So there you are. Uh, we want to just hit install all uh, and we're going to specify the first option here from the, uh, the, uh, the first option right over here. And we're going to say yes to begin the download and installation process. So I'll let this download and install and I'll get back to you when this is done. All right, so the installation process is winding up as you can see right over here. Uh, one thing I want to actually cover is when dealing with your graphics cards because, and of course your processors, uh, you can essentially install the microcode as uh, specified right over here. Uh, I think they actually cover it uh, in regards to Intel. So uh, when dealing with the firmware, uh, the Linux firmware package. This uh, will essentially include the AMD micro, uh, the AMD microcode. I'm pretty sure of it. But uh, for the Linux one, uh, I think I'll have to actually make a video covering that. But again, this is primarily focused on VirtualBox, and I'll be showing you uh, for the graphics drivers how to install the VirtualBox guest utilities. All right. So now that it's installed the base system and the all the other packages that we specified, we now need to generate the FS tab file, uh, and we'll use it. We'll actually define it. Uh, by UUID instead of labels because that's just much better. So we'll say gen FS tab and then we say UUID that is denoted by a capital U and of course this is in the MNT folder or the MNT directory and we're going to output this into MNT uh, Etsy FS tab uh, and we just want to verify the syntax that's very important and we hit enter and we can also just display the contents of this file now sorry that is on mnt uh, etsy and fs tab and we hit enter and you can see we have uh, the uh, uuid uh, for the particular drive or partition and we have the information regarding uh, regarding the actual format so xt4 and you have the name there so dev sda1 so that's working fine that uh, we don't need to do anything much there so now we need to change uh, root into the new system or and we do this using the arch uh, change root uh, command so arch or ch root whatever you want to call it um, and we want to access this is all within the mounted uh, folder and we just hit enter and we're now in our system and this is where we would we'd start configuring our system uh, you know in regards to installing any other packages you want creating users installing our desktop environment so the first thing we want to do is again we're following the arch wiki is we want to uh, set the time zone so ln sf uh, we then say uh, user share that is zone info and then you specify your region. So for example, I'll say Europe uh, and then I say London. That's just a simple example. And this is saved in Etsy local time, uh, local time like so. And I hit enter and then we need to run the hardware clock to generate the actual uh, time. So that activates the hardware clock. So hardware clock uh, sys, uh, so that is uh, sys uh, t-o-h-c and uh, sorry. That is like so, and we hit enter, and that should have set up our time, our time zone, and uh, set up the hardware clock. The next thing is your localization. 
So uh, I installed Vim. If you didn't uh, install Vim, you can use Nano, but we need to edit the Etsy locale.gen file. And uh, we want to search for uh, the language. So within this file, you want to uncomment the, the language or the locale or your locale. We're looking for English US. So I'm just gonna search for it, English underscore US. Uh, and I'm just gonna use the, um, let me look for it. So I, uh, there, there it is. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uncomment it here. So English US UTF-8 UTF-8, and then I'm gonna save this file. And then to, to actually generate your locale, we're gonna say locale um, gen, right? So locale gen, that's gonna generate our locales. I'm using English US UTF-8. After we've generated our locales, uh, we now need to, uh, we need to configure our network. And the first thing we need to do is uh, create our host name. This is very important. So Vim Etsy host name, uh, Let's, uh, let's open this up. Uh, yeah, Vim Etsy host name, and we're gonna call this Arch Linux, or we can just, yeah, let's just call it Arch Linux. And I'm gonna save that. Now we need to uh, edit our host file, which I believe you have to do manually now. So Vim SC hosts, and uh, again, you can use Nano if you want to, that really doesn't change. And we're just gonna use the standard configuration here. So 127.0.0.1, and that is, that is going to be sorry um local host and, and we have uh, one here which is essentially just local host again uh, and then we have 127.1 point uh, sorry point zero point one point one and that is going to be arch linux your host name dot a local domain so make sure to change it appropriately and then this is uh, and then we specify the host name again so arch linux one more time and then we can save this. Uh, the next thing we want to do in regards to our network, um, we need to install uh, IP utils, which I forgot to do. So sudo pacman, uh, pac, pacman s. Uh, well, I don't need sudo because in the root user, we say uh, IP uh, utils uh, and net control. Um, and we hit enter. And I'm going to use system D uh, resolve. Uh, of course, we're using system D. Um, there we are. So that's installed. Uh, we need to enable the DHCP CD service. So uh, system control enable DHCP CD. That's very important. And it's going to create the sim link for us. So that's uh, all you need to do in regards to your network management. You can also install network manager if you want. I personally just use DHCP CD, but you can do that if you want as well. So again, that would typically entail Pacman S network network manager and we hit yes and you would enable it on startup which is what many people usually recommend so we can just install it in case you guys wanted to do this by the way as you would have guessed i just saw another package there called uh, the wpa supplicant i haven't covered how to install uh, how to perform the installation if you have if you're using wi-fi so i'll actually have to make a video a separate video covering that but this is primarily focused on virtual box so uh, they would, they, there isn't any particular need for that. So we'll just let this install. Uh, the next thing we have to do is uh, we need to set the root password. We then need to install the grub bootloader, which is uh, again, very, very important. So we'll just wait for this to complete. We then also I'll then reboot and then create uh, the user Lexus so that we can start installing our audio drivers and desktop manager as well as our display manager. So uh, hopefully this completes soon. There we are, the installation process has begun and uh, we are good. All right, excellent. So now uh, we need to set our root password. So password, I'm just gonna set my root password here and there we are. The password has been updated successfully. We now need to install our bootloader. I'm gonna be using grub. So I'm just gonna say pacman s, uh, pacman s grub. I'm just gonna hit yes, there we are and um, we're going to just click on boot loader here. Uh, and again, it specifies if you have an Intel or AMD CPU, enable the microcode uh, updates in addition. Now, again, if you're running this in VirtualBox, I don't have to cover that yet. But uh, if I just click on Grub here and we click on installation, uh, this is specified uh, to the actual, uh, the actual name of the disk here. Um, so to install Grub, we say Grub um, install dev. Uh, SDA, not dev SDA1, so hit enter. So it's going to auto detect the platform you're installing it for, or you can specify the target platform right over here. 
and then uh, after we have installed it we then need to create the grub configuration file or the bootloader configuration and that's specified uh, right over here after we installed grub you can see generate your bootloader configuration with grub mk config uh, and it, it is output into the boot directory under grub and it's called grub.cfg now in the event you're going to install another kernel uh, whether that be lts or the latest kernel you need to you need to regenerate that grub configuration file so that every time you boot up it uses the new kernel all right so the installation is complete so now let's generate the grub configuration file or your bootloader configuration file so grub uh, sorry let me just get in my virtual machine so grub uh, mk config and we're going to output this uh, into boot sorry boot uh, grub and we're going to call it grub.cfg we're going to hit enter that's going to begin the installation process all right so you can see that if you've done everything correct so far and you installed your linux kernel you'll actually see it right over there so vm linux lts linux lts so that's a good sign uh, that means everything is working uh, okay so far so after installing the bootloader uh, we can now reboot so the first thing we want to do is we want to exit and we want to unmount it's always good to unmount so you mount r um, mnt and we hit that and uh, we can now reboot sorry not exit we want to reboot uh, we also need to eject the arch iso but before I do that, I think I'll just specify the boot options. So I'm just going to hit reboot and I'm going to hit F12 so that I can specify the hard drive. So I'm just going to specify the first option there. There we are. We can see that Grub is installed correctly. We'll specify Arch Linux there. So it's going to start Arch Linux for us. And we now want to create our user account. So we don't work with a root account. So I'm just going to say root. We log in and we specified the password in the previous step. All right. So the first thing we want to do is if we try... Uh, if I try and ping Google, so this is one of the disadvantages of not using your network manager. So I need to uh, actually work with the resolve.conf file here. Uh, I need to specify the name server. I think that's what's causing the issue. Name server uh, 192.168.1.1. I've specified my default gateway. You can specify any other name server you want. I'll save this and I'll say um, system uh, control. Uh, so system control uh, uh, restart uh, DHCP CD hit enter if I uh, let me just see if I can see my IP address yeah so let me try and ping google.com now all right so there we go so internet is back and we can begin working uh, in on, on the next step so uh, what we can do is we can take a look at the post installation uh, recommendations here um, uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create our user, our standard user console. So I'll say user add m for their home directory and we'll add them to the to the wheel group. The wheel group is like the pseudo group on Ubuntu. It allows you to specify administrator privileges. So I'm going to specify the group name that is wheel. Uh, the shell is going to be bin, uh, bin, bash, sorry. And then we specify the user as Alexis. I'm going to hit enter. Again, you can customize that the way you want. I'll then specify the password for the user Alexis and uh, there we are there we are we've set the password uh, we now need to uh, modify the vsudo file because we need to uh, I believe we need to specify or uncomment the wheel uh, the wheel group so that we have those permissions set um, so let's say vsudo uh, vsudo no editor found Editor found or the editor path is VI, not Vim. Um, that's weird. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, let me just try and display the echo. Uh, let me just try and echo the editor variable. All right. So the editor isn't set. So we'll have to use the uh, we'll have to set the editor manually. So I'll set the editor is going to be equal to Vim. You can set yours to Nano or whatever editor you installed. And we'll say vsudo uh, vsudo and hit enter. And uh, we want to go all the way down um, to the group specification. So uh, uncomment uh, to allow members of the group wheel to execute any command. So that's what we want to do. We want to uncomment this. So that means that the user Alexis now has administrative privileges. So we're just going to write and quit there. And uh, we are good now. All right. Uh, what we want to do now is install the VirtualBox guest utilities before we start working with our display manager and our desktop environment. So we're almost there. Uh, 
If we take a look at the um, the uh, the general uh, recommendations and you want to go under your graphical user interfaces, you can use display servers like Xorg. In my case, um, we'll start off with display drivers. That's why I'm going to show you how to install the VirtualBox guest utilities. Uh, then for the desktop environments, we're going to be using XFCE. Now XFCE uh, and LightDM as our uh, as our display manager. So if we open up the display manager page here, we're looking for LightDM right over here. Uh, LightDM is pretty simple to install. It is under the LightDM package. We also want to install the LightDM uh, GTK greeter. So before we do that, so we say sudo pacman, uh, or let's actually switch into the user Lexis here. And uh, so we say sudo pacman uh, s, and we're going to specify uh, virtualbox uh, guest utils. Hit enter. I'm going to enter my password so you can see the F, uh, this account has the accurate, uh, the appropriate permissions. Just going to hit yes to download so it's going to start downloading and installing the virtualbox guest utilities this this shouldn't take time at all we we'll let that complete and then uh, we can begin installing uh light dm we also have to install our audio drivers if you do want any audio drivers um that's cool let's take a step a step back here multimedia we want to check out sound so we'll install the ulsa the ALSA package, uh, well, let's open that up, ALSA package and, um, and the ALSA package, ALSA, so this is Pulse Audio ALSA, uh, ALSA Utilities, uh, let's just take a look at it, uh, we need to install, sorry, ALSA and ALSA, okay, ALSA, Pulse Audio and Pulse Audio ALSA. All right, so let's do that right now. So we'll say uh, sudo pacman s pulse audio. You don't really need to do this if you're running this on VirtualBox. Pulse uh, pulse audio uh, also hit enter. It's going to let this download and install. Uh, this shouldn't take time. Let's talk about LightDM. So we want to install LightDM, the LightDM greeter, a GTK greeter. Uh, and then we have to enable the LightDM service. So we do that using systemd. Um, so that's right over here, lightdm.service. And then XFCE, XFCE installation should be simple. XFCE group, that installs everything. Uh, we don't need the XFCE uh, goodies. I think we can just keep it minimal. All right, so that installation is complete. Uh, let's begin installing the... Uh, we also need XORG. Um, let's install xorg here. Uh, display uh, display xorg. Cause yeah, we'll have to set up xorg. Uh, but I think light with lightdm we don't have to start. Uh, or we we don't need to start xfc through the x uh, the x init rc file. So what we'll do is we'll just say sudo pacman s and we'll say xorg. Uh, we then need to install the LightDM, 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 uh, what is it called? Uh, LightDM GTK Greeter, GTK, sorry, uh, GTK Greeter, um, XFCE4, 4, and uh, we'll just install these packages. So yes, this is going to take, a, this is going to take a while, it's about 125 megabytes. Do bear with me, my internet connection isn't the best in the world. Uh, if you have a faster mirror or a fast internet connection, then again, you can install it much quicker. So I'll let this complete um, and I'll get back to you when it's done. All right, uh, as you can see, it's uh, just begun the installation process. So we're just going to wait for this to complete. Um, and then we have to enable uh, the light DM service, which is uh, very, very important. Um, that will essentially start the light dm display manager for us or the light display manager as it's called now you can use any other display manager you want uh if i can just go into the display managers right over here so for your graphical display managers you can use light dm also lxde uh, if you're using kde as your desktop environment you can use the uh the sddm right over here uh, which works very good with plasma and lxqt as you can see as specified right over here so 
Uh, now that we have that installed, we need to enable LightDM. So to do this, we use the sudo system uh, ctl uh, enable and we say LightDM and we want to make sure that uh, that is entered. There we are. All right, so that is done now. Um, uh, so we've pretty much enabled that and we have our desktop environment set up. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to reboot into our system and that'll take us directly into XFCE. Uh, remember, we don't have anything installed, any additional packages. Uh, we only have uh, whatever XFCE came with. So if you want to install any other packages, you can do them. You can do it right now or you can wait after. So what we want to do is we want to reboot and uh, we just want to specify the boot device. I'm just going to hit enter. I'm just going to specify Arch Linux with grub and uh, we've rebooted the system now and uh, there we are as you can see uh, XFCE we're greeted by the light uh, well what, what is it called the light DM uh, GTK greeter uh, and you can see it gives us our host name Arch Linux our desktop environment is XFCE so we're all good there so I'm just going to enter my password for Alexis and that should take us into the XFCE desktop environment the latest version and there you go so uh, we've pretty much installed the uh, we've pretty much installed XFCE 4 on Arch Linux and we've, uh, we've completed the setup. So this is like running the most minimal setup I bet you've ever seen apart from XFCE, which has added some overhead. So if I can just display here, you can see now we're up to 196 megabytes, which isn't too bad. So let's start installing the packages we require. By the way, I installed the um, what's it called? The uh, the virtual box guest utilities but for some reason it isn't uh, rescaling so what I'll do is I'll just leave it like so so sudo uh, pacman and let's synchronize uh, let's ensure we have everything we have the latest of everything here so that uh, we install Firefox and we can begin setting up black arch so uh, by default we have our terminal which is uh, your default XFCE terminal right over here uh, you also have Thunar, I believe. Uh, let's just check help about. Yeah, Thunar is your file manager and it's super snappy. It's unbelievable. So we'll go back into our terminal here and uh, let's install. Uh, we want Firefox. Uh, let's install HTOP as well. And uh, I'll just, uh, yeah, we want to install it all. So I'll let this uh, download and install. Hopefully it doesn't take too much time. Uh, in the meantime, let me just walk you through a few other options here within the general um, within the general recommendations. So this page is extremely useful if you if you're after your in the installation process in regards to managing and maintaining your Arch installation. There's uh, like a ton of useful information within the Arch Wiki. I'm sure you already know about that, but um, uh, you can take a look at the package management system, which again is as you can see it uses Backman. Uh, you can learn more about the Arch user repository or the AUR. Uh, that's one of the advantages of running Arch actually is the AUR. Uh, you, you pretty much have like any or all Linux packages you could ever want uh, in the AUR. So when you're running Arch, you don't have to worry about compilation or anything like that or compiling uh, or building your own uh, your own programs or scripts, uh, you know, from source. The AUR already has it and it'll automatically do it for you. So it really doesn't matter what program you're working with or what program you want. The AUR is fantastic. Uh, as I said, if you want me to make videos uh, on Arch Linux, let me know. Uh, so I'll just wait for this to complete uh, so I don't waste any of your time and I'll get back to you when this is done. All right, uh, installation is winding up here and we can finally begin setting up uh, the Black Arch repositories, which is very, very simple and straightforward. Um, so what we want to do now is uh, let's open up our web browser here um, where I actually have to specify Firefox, uh, but it, it opens it up for us. It opens it up uh, there. All right. So let's go to blackarch.org. So uh, we can actually just Google, let's say black arch. Uh, and uh, we want to go f to the black arch repositories here. Um, for some weird reason, uh, let's let's see if I can actually just increase the size here because I know I'll not be able to to actually do this. Uh, just settings manager, where is the display? I haven't worked with this uh, XFC for a while now, so let me just scale this up so uh, you guys can actually see this a whole lot better. So there we are. Uh, let's just resize this and hit close. All right, excellent. So we want to go to blackarch.org. 
I'm going to go into downloads and within downloads, we're just going to let that load up here. Um, so uh, we want to go to the install on top of Arch Linux section where we can, uh, we need to uh, just download this script right over here, the strap script. Um, we can then uh, give it executable permissions and then we execute the script. And then after that, uh, we can begin installing uh, the tools that we want. So again, to install all of the tools, we can run the Black Arch, uh, the entire Black Arch category, which will install it for us, or the entire menu of tools. To install a particular category, you can specify it right over here. This is a subcategory. And then uh, to see the Black Arch categories, you can also uh, this, you use this command right over here. It'll actually grip. Uh, so what we want to do is, uh, first of all, we want to actually just get this, uh, this script here with curl. So, uh, by the way, do, we, do I even have curl installed? Uh, let me just, uh, sorry, let me just install it. So sudo pacman s, I believe, I'm not really sure what comes with the base packages. So yeah, it looks like we had to install it manually. Uh, just go to my desktop here and I'll get the script. There we are. So we want to give it executable permission. So we're gonna say chmod strap dot sh and uh, we then want to execute it. So strap dot sh, uh, so sudo, uh, we need uh, root privileges, so strap sh and we hit enter. It's going to start installing the black arch key ring. We're going to give that a few seconds here. Uh, for some weird reason, my entire terminal tiled uh, like that. So, by the way, let's uh, let's actually check out the uh, the various wallpapers that we have with XFC. This one is uh, giving me a lot of problems <laughs> with my eyes. Man, this is extremely bright. Um, so we'll just wait for this to install the black arch keyring. All right, so it uh, successfully added the black arch keyring or installed it rather, and it's now synchronizing the package databases. So uh, we should be good to pretty much install any or all of the tools within the black arch repository. As you can see, there it is. And it tells you black arch Linux is ready. So uh, you can pretty much follow the instructions that um, that they give you right over here in regards to actually searching and installing tools. So again, we can just use this command right over here uh, to actually display all the categories of tools. So Black Arch is uh, an ex extremely large, uh, it has an extremely large repository or collection of pen testing tools, security tools. It really, really doesn't matter. You'll, you'll not miss any tool here uh, when working with Arch. So I'll give you an example. You can follow those commands, but I typically like installing the tools that I'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, I can say sudo pacman um, s, say nmap, uh, let's see SQL map, uh, let's see what else, comics, we can, oh, sorry, uh, comics and I hit enter, and you can see it found the package comics, which is not available in the AUR, by the way, or I think it is, but in, in any case, with Black Arch, we can install all of these tools. Uh, without any issues. Um, so we're going to let those install. We're going to let this install the tools that we just specified. I just selected a random group of tools, just showing you that you can install the tools that you want. Uh, because if you go for, if you go and install all the tools within the Black Arch repository, it's a lot. Like it's, uh, it really is a lot of tools that, again, it, it defeats the purpose of installing Arch because you want to keep your system uh, resource consumption as minimal as possible. You want to keep the bloatware as low as possible on your system. And you can see how snappy this is. This is like a hundred times better than Kali Linux. And you can see I've just set it up. Everything's working really, really smoothly. XFCE works better than it does on Kali. And again, this is in a VM, remember? This is, I'm sure for those of you who have ran Kali in VMs, you know that how fantastic and how great this looks. So uh, definitely try this out. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I think I'll be using uh, Arch uh, for in my pen testing videos from now on, uh, just to see how it goes. Uh, the stability is fantastic. I use Arch or at least an Arch based distribution as my host operating system. I'm currently using Manjaro on my main workstation and I have Arch installed on one of my other personal systems that I use for personal projects. Um, but I'm just going to let this complete. I know uh, my internet connection isn't the best. Uh, so we'll just wait for this to complete. Uh, look at the dependencies. TCP dump seems to be the biggest uh, dependency here. So Python and also Scapy um, for Nmap. That should be pretty simple. SQL map uh, is what is being installed right now. Comic should be pretty simple as well. Um, 
so we'll let this complete there we are the installation is complete um let's see if we can actually find burp suite and uh let's see uh let's see if we can run comics first uh, so there we are comics work straight out of the box um so sudo pacman uh let's look for um burp burp was not found burp suite uh, that wasn't found. Uh, let's see if we can zap a uh, zap proxy. Uh, well, it wasn't uh, in any case. Let's try and install it. So uh, burp, uh, burp, burp suite. Uh, yeah, so there, there is burp suite and installed the, the dependencies for you. So GRE open JDK 8 uh, instead of 11, which as you know, causes a lot of issues. Um, let's see what other tools we can install. Uh, how about WordPress scan? That's usually a good one. Uh, or WFuzz. Uh, let's install that. Yeah, there we go. We'll just hit enter and we can install all of these tools. Uh, and you can just install the tools that you need instead of having an entire toolkit that you'll never even touch or, you know, specific tools that you'll never even touch. Um, so this is really the advantage of uh, using the uh, black arch repositories if you are on an arch based distribution or you are uh, running arch uh, let's see if we can find go buster there we are go buster works straight out of the box you don't have to do anything uh yeah black arch is fantastic so and there you go so it's uh, fairly fairly simple to set up uh, let me know if you guys have any questions if you had any errors that you're facing you pretty much will get the same results if you follow the the instructions that I gave you here because this works I've tried it on multiple machines with VirtualBox so if you are setting up a VM for pen testing and you want to use Arch Linux uh, in uh, in conjunction with the Black Arch repos uh, you can definitely set this up uh, again uh, leave your feedback in the comment section uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for this uh, in this video uh, if you want to support the channel you can do so on patreon.com uh, forward slash hackersploit and uh, that's all I wanted to actually saying this video so uh, i'll be seeing you in the next video peace